faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. Hey guys, Jared Moon here from Minute 3 Fitness and welcome to the Better Humanology Podcast. Today we have an interview. Before I get into that interview, I wanted to say that this podcast is brought to you by nothing. Uh, It's actually brought to you by you. It's brought to you by better humans all around the world. Everyone who visits, reads, uh, signs up for a program or anything like that at end3fitness.com, you are why this podcast is happening to this day. And so first, I want to say thank you very much for supporting the podcast, you know, by visiting in3fitness.com and sharing it and signing up for our programs and doing everything uh, that we do at Into 3 Fitness. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, you're not sure quite what that is, just check out in3fitness.com and you will be able to learn more. Other than that, I did want to say the book, The Garage Gym Athlete is coming out soon. If you want to learn more about that, if you want to get a free digital copy of the book, uh, there's there's still time left to sign up for that. You can go to garagegymathlete.com and sign up. Actually, there's a new video there that you can watch that talks all about the book and you can learn more about that. So feel free to sign up there too. Um, And then last little announcement here. If you do enjoy the show, uh, give us a five-star review on iTunes and a positive comment. It does a lot for the show. Uh, iTunes will actually share it with more people. They'll suggest it to more people. More people will hear about it if you do that. So if you want to leave a five-star review and a positive comment, that would really help the show out and we could reach way more people. Uh, So other than all that, I want to say that we have a great interview today with Jake Thompson. He is the CEO, but not chief executive officer. He calls himself the chief encouragement officer at Compete Every Day, which is a really awesome company and you should check them out at competeeveryday.com but the whole premise behind compete every day is very similar very in line with what we're doing at better humanology and that is competing against yourself uh, always striving to get better Uh, and i just i love jake's mindset and his whole idea behind leaving a legacy and encouraging people so had him on the podcast it was a great interview he has a lot of good information to share Uh, so without any further ado let's have jake on the better humanology podcast All right, Jake, welcome to the Better Humanology podcast, man. I'm super glad to have you on. I know we've been trying to set this up for the last week or so, and I'm I'm super stoked uh, that we're finally here, you know, sitting down and doing this podcast. So welcome to the show, man. Awesome. I, man, I appreciate you having me on. I am jacked to be here. I'm glad our schedules finally worked out to sit down and talk. Yeah, man, me too. So for anyone who doesn't know you out there, can you just give uh, my audience a, a a rundown of who you are, uh, what you're doing, and and anything that you feel is important uh, for people to know about yourself. Absolutely. Uh, My name is Jake Thompson. Uh, I live here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm the founder of an apparel brand called Compete Every Day. Uh, I'm originally from East Texas, went to school at TCU. I'm a proud Horned Frog. Uh, And over the last six years, uh, have really kind of changed the light my lifestyle from sports focus to more fitness active lifestyle focus uh, trying to take advantage of some great opportunities encourage some awesome people and and really enjoy life while helping others uh, make the most out of theirs I love that man and you know that I part I kind of want to start there um, because you said you know you're talking about compete every day so tell me the story about how compete every day got started and you know, more importantly, where were you in life, you know, and what, 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 what st- uh, sticks out to me most about you is your passion. It, like you can be on the phone with you for two and a half seconds and, and I can tell that you're a very passionate guy. So tell me the story about how Compete Every Day got started and, you know, what passion sparked uh, this company and what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. I had, man, I'd grown up thinking I was going to be the next Jerry Maguire. Uh, I wanted to get into sports. I wanted to be a sports agent. Uh, and that was kind of a route I started trying to build for myself in college. I spent a few years in the sports representation world, uh, went to grad school for it. And with about two weeks left in grad school during the fall of 08, kind of when the economy went to the tank, uh, I decided that wasn't for me. Uh, I, I was afraid that I would die at 40 or younger of a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ups and downs of the recruiting and losing guys, I just 
uh, emotionally at that stage was a little immature and, and didn't know how to properly handle it. Um, and so I really operated some, some crazy stress levels. And so I got out, uh, not really having a plan, uh, started freelancing, graphic design, uh, basic marketing strategy. I taught myself a little bit of web work. I uh, started teaching myself graphic design and, and then kind of paired that with my sports marketing background to do some consulting. Spent a few years doing that and really in the fall of 2010, just started to evaluate kind of where I was in life and, and felt that part of it had, had kind of been aimless. Uh, it, it's crazy. I'd recently, I guess August of 2010, had started getting involved with CrossFit and the whole team sports competitive drive that I'd had all growing up in sports and some in college just was kind of lit back on fire uh, and just this daily competition against myself. And so the more I started advancing into kind of that CrossFit community, uh, the more my work and, and kind of the aimless direction from a work standpoint I'd been going really started to stand out more. Um, I'd been building something that was really just about me. Uh, it was my own consulting business. I didn't have any other gains other than man, I just want to make a lot of money, uh, have a nice agency and, and be able to do fancy things just because I can. Uh, and, and so really had to kind of evaluate what I wanted the rest of my life to look like. And, and I wasn't sure that's exactly what I wanted it to be or my legacy to be. And so I started tinkering with this idea of, of pursuing a, a greatness in your life daily, uh, whether that was your faith, your work, your health, your dreams, your relationships, taking all areas of your life and, and pursuing each and every one of them daily, trying to be a little bit better than you were the day before. And, and so multiple iterations of, of that idea and concept kind of swirled around and, until I was on a ski trip with a few buddies and, and driving to Colorado. I, they knew what I'd been doing. They, they heard some of the ideas and I just casually kind of threw out. I was like, what do you guys think about compete every day? And both guys loved it. They're like, man, that fits your personality. Like that, that seems to align with everything you've been talking about um, in this manner and, and taking the idea of me versus you out of it and focusing on me versus me. And so I had this really cool idea, but no idea what to do with it. Uh, and so I spent about six, seven months tinkering with projects, ideas, channels to try and develop it. And it really wasn't until my best friend suggested I look at the guys out of Boston, life is good. Uh, you know, they've built a $120, $140 million apparel business around a stick figure and this message of, of life is good and the power of optimism. And he encouraged me to really look at it and evaluate and thought that I could do a similar path uh, if I took a little more of a sports focus, but took this idea of compete every day with a positive spin on the idea of competition and build it out. And so... I didn't know any better. Uh, he and I had, had saved up for a guy's trip to New Zealand. He ended up spending his trip budget on a engagement ring. Uh, I'm from small East Texas. I was not about to do my first international trip solo because my ideas in my head were as ignorant as can be of like taken and <laughs> hostile. And yeah. so not really knowing what to expect and that long of a flight, I said, you know what, if I'm going to do something, I'm single still in my twenties, like I got to do it now. And so I took my trip budget, put it into boxes of t-shirts and tank tops printed with CED compete every day. Uh, and just started selling them out of the back of my car to anyone and everyone that would give me two minutes, three minutes to let them tell them, let me tell them about this idea, this brand, this lifestyle. You know, and I think I, I love that entire response. I, I think compete every day fits so in line with uh, better humanology, you, you said things like, you know, being better than the day before uh, and, you know, competing against yourself, the, the me versus me. And that's what, so better humanology, you know, is not, uh, we are the better humans. It's, it's the study of becoming better human and more importantly, becoming better against yourself. That's your, that's your yardstick, not, a, not better than other people. You know, it's, it's just being better than yourself. So I love the idea of compete every day. Uh, but another thing that stuck out when you were telling me that story is, um, you're clearly a really a, a big thinker. I don't think a lot of people uh, would would ask themselves some of the questions that you did. You said, you know, um, you started thinking, you know, what what is my life going to look like? Uh, you know, what kind of legacy am I leaving? Uh, did that just kind of hit you one day or did you stumble across some sort of literature or what what made you start to ask those bigger questions? You know, I, I honestly think the seeds had been planted uh, probably by my favorite, one of my favorite, if not my favorite book of all time, 
uh, by a, a guy named Donald Miller. Um, and it's uh, a million miles in a thousand years. And it just talks about the idea of stories and how powerful stories have characters that overcome struggles, uh, go on this fascinating journey, invite others to be along with them. And, you know, that's kind of how they create their life. And, and we wouldn't go to a movie theater and watch a movie about a guy that spent the whole one hour and 45 minutes working his butt off to get this Lexus. And all he wants is this Lexus car. And at the end of the movie, He's worked his nine to five. He's worked some side jobs. He gets his Lexus, roll the credits. Like there's no, we would feel disappointed leaving that, but that movie, but yet we, most of us live our lives that way. And so reading that book and that idea of, I need an obstacle to overcome. I need a, a purpose. Uh, and more importantly, I need to do it in a way that is going to invite others to be a part of that journey uh, really just hit home. Um, and I remember reading that book through a few times uh, and then reading it again after starting Compete uh, and just trying to take the elements of a great story, a great movie um, that's timeless and, and transfer that to my life uh, in a way that I can hopefully impact the others that are involved in that journey and that story, either briefly or, or for long portions, uh, in a positive manner. I think that's really awesome, man. I'm familiar with uh, Donald Miller and Story Brand, you know, and I'm sure yeah. he covers a lot of the same stuff, but. That, that's really awesome. I haven't read that book, but it's just uh, I just jotted it down for my uh, my list. So that's uh... he, uh, you absolutely. He actually uh, started the Storyline Conference before Story Brand, and so I've been itching to go to Story Brand. Have multiple friends that have been through it. The Storyline is the same concept, same sort of curriculum from a personal perspective, uh, and I just found it fascinating because it talks about turning your adversities into part of your story that makes it great. Uh, and uses countless movies and, and uh, literature from the past of showing how this works out for certain people um, for a better overall story when you're looking back at the end of your life. I think that's awesome. I definitely I'll put a, a link to all of that stuff in the show notes for the listeners if uh, if they're interested in checking that stuff out. So, you know, you start to compete every day. Uh, you clearly uh, are successful, you know, uh, today, but you know, it, it probably wasn't easy to get there. And I know uh, one thing that I, I read about you and, and one of the things I, I definitely want to ask about was you mentioned, you know, uh, fear having almost deterred you from meeting goals in the past. Uh, so I want to know, because, you know, we all struggle with that. Like there could be any any amount of fear, like going all the way down to micro levels of I don't want to squat 500 pounds because I'm afraid it could crush me to building a big company like you're doing. And you know, afraid to take it to the next level because what that could mean for your life. So what did it take for you to break through that fear? And, and why was the fear there, you think? You know, I think, well, first, why the fear was there is I think one of the reasons with me is just especially in today's age and social media, we see what everyone else is doing. We see their highlights, as a lot of us like to say, as we see their highlights, we don't see the behind the scenes. And so seeing all these people's highlights kind of makes you sometimes question yourself uh, and question that ability of, man, can I get this done? Am I going to get this done? Uh, and especially in the early days of, of starting any journey, whether it's company, fitness, whatever, you might have an idea of where that end goal is and what you're aiming for, but it's really easy to lose sight of it. Um, and it's really easy during the hardest of days to remind yourself kind of why you're going and why you're still doing this, uh, because it feels like one, you're never going to get there. And two, you may have just had setback after setback after setback. Uh, and that's a really hard point to keep going. Um, and I have to have this conversation with a lot of people because I seem to be, I'm a very positive guy. I'm upstart, uh, or, and try to have a, a positive outlook on a lot of things, uh, and a lot of people around me wonder, you know, what are, where are the bad days? And, and I do have bad days. My wife sees my bad days. My, my closest friends have seen my bad days. And, and they're honestly the reason that I've been able to overcome some of that fear. Uh, and so I encourage most people that you need to surround yourself with people that will challenge you, uh, but also kind of pick you up uh, and remind you. And so for me, overcoming those fears was just a simple reminder of every person that I'm afraid that's doing something I'm afraid I can't do. One has been in my position, but two, they have, they've probably had a heck of a different journey than I have. You know, from, an, from our business standpoint, there's a ton of businesses that come in with 
crazy high capital. I mean, they've got funding to start that I wouldn't have dreamed of. Uh, or they have connections or they've had a professional sports background and, and on and on. But they've had their struggles. Um, it's, they're just no different than mine in that they're facing obstacles. It's just different obstacles. And so for me, it was remembering that. Uh, it was reminding myself every day of why I did it. Uh, so if I was in a position where I would lose sight of, man, why am I doing this? Is it, is it even worth it anymore? Um, I had a note card taped to the dash of my truck. Uh, with just daily reminders of here's what I'm competing for today. Here's my goal. Uh, it was I had pictures and, and tape things in my bathroom mirror, uh, so I would see every morning and and, and kind of everywhere I went, uh, I put specific reminders that most days I just kind of see, acknowledge, and keep going. But on the really really bad days, the days I'm, I'm kind of stuck or battling those thoughts in my head. I have to drill down and really read each and every one of them and say, okay, this is why we're doing it. Uh, and I've been, I'll be honest, man, I've been very fortunate and blessed that during some of my hardest days and trials with Compete, I've just happened to get the most random text message from a friend or email from customers. Um, I can't tell you how many of those we've gotten over the years that you know, they would say, hey, this blog post or this email j just was exactly what I needed today, and, and here's what I'm going through, and thank you. And they have no idea how much I needed that that day to remind me exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, man, and I, I, I love how you just ended it there because I've been in that exact same situation many times before, especially the, the early days of running my website when I was getting – no traffic. I, it didn't seem like anybody cared. And then there would just like, yeah, a random email would come in. Um, and it would just be like, Hey man, just keep doing what you're doing. This is awesome. You know, thanks. And I just be like, that's it. That's all I need to keep going, you know? Uh, and, and that's really, really motivational. So you mentioned, um, you, you maybe talked to some people who had been in your position before, and that's part of the reason that you kept going. Um, which leads me to another question. Have you had mentors, um, in creating compete every day and on this journey uh, that you're on now? Uh, yes. And, and uh, not a lot of them have been the, the kind that I've probably ever sat down and had a cup of coffee with or talked to, uh, you know, a lot of people in the apparel industry and, and just t-shirts, like you got to sell a lot of t-shirts to make a living out of this. And so a lot of people don't want the extra competition. And so trying to find people that could, help me understand the business was a was a huge struggle um but I, I was very fortunate that there were a lot of business people out there uh that i could just i read their blogs i follow them on social media i see what they're saying you know gary vaynerchuk and, and his nonstop hustle has been somebody that i've followed since 2011 uh, i've had an opportunity to work with a handful of guys to come in to compete and, and kind of help me understand from a larger picture the brand and, and how to better communicate it. Uh, but, you know, one of the most influential ones was is a guy named Chris Brogan. Um, and Chris and I, I'd followed Chris for years. I read uh, his early books, Trust Agents, uh, was a big fan of him, and, and he was huge within social media and, and business. And just happened to see one day on Twitter, two or three years ago, he tweeted out, is there anyone out there that needs help with something that I can help them with today? And so I just immediately shot a tweet of, Hey, I'm struggling with this and this in my business. And Chris shot me a message back and was like, here's my email, email me, let's set up a time, have a call. Just kind of got to, to build a little friendship out of it, uh, through email and, and then connect at some conferences in the future. And, and Chris has been awesome in that when I have a bad day, because Chris is, New York Times bestseller. He's been incredibly successful, but he's also been pretty transparent about there were years when, man, he struggled to know if he was even going to pay the bills or get it done after having early success. And so when we went through some rough patches and, and I was like, you know, how are we going to make ends meet the next month, the next two months? I was able to kind of give him just a quick call and say, hey, here's one of my backs against the wall. When you were in this position, what did you do? And, and he was able to give phenomenal advice to that. And so, you know, we talk every so often, but it, it, it's always, you know, how can I help him? Um, how can he, he's reaching out to ask how he can help me or just encourage each other. And so those are huge. Uh, he's been a huge blessing on me um, as well as just trying to get to know other guys in the entrepreneurial space 
knowing that they're going through similar struggles um, in much dis- different capacities. Kevin Lavelle is a guy here in Dallas. He started Mizzen in Maine, kind of a menswear meets sportswear company. Uh, it's a pretty awesome concept and, and brand for men's dress and formal wear. But just getting to talk to Kevin sometimes of how did you tackle these obstacles? Because he's had a very different journey than I have, uh, but he's also in apparel and he understands building apparel from scratch. And, and so he's able to provide advice and, and help that direction. Um, and hopefully I'm able to add some value back to him or some connections back for him. That's awesome, man. And that's something I want to explore a little bit more on, on the show is, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, that question is never, never asked of successful people, whether it be an athlete or an entrepreneur, uh, you know, a little bit more about their mentors, because I think it's good to point that out, um, that, you know, you, you know, you had some help, even if it's just a little bit, maybe a nudge in the right direction, or maybe it's just positive words. Um, and the fact that you connected with, with Chris is, is amazing. That's awesome. Um, I'm very familiar with his work. So I, I just love to highlight that, uh, so would you recommend, any if anyone else out there, whatever they're trying to achieve, they're trying to become a better human, uh, compete against themselves, would you recommend that they, when starting, go get a mentor? Oh, absolutely. And I don't, and I'm, tra- I'm going to completely blank on whose podcast I've been listening to lately that talked about the best ways to approach getting a mentor. And it, it may have been Tim Ferriss, but it's not, hey, let me email you and will you be my mentor? And let me take you to coffee and, and all that. It's it's getting to just, hey, I would love to reach out. I admire your success. Do you mind if every so often I, I ask you a couple of questions? Or how can I help you? How can I serve you? Provide them value because they're essentially giving you advice and information that they've obviously taken years to learn or, or maybe they've been through the failures to to learn um, and see firsthand and they can help you maneuver around that and and obviously greatly speed up your learning curve uh, in a way that you wouldn't have been able to do without. And so I'm all for finding mentors and it may be a situation where you can't connect with that person directly. Like you just, it's not someone you can immediately email and connect with, but they put a ton of content out there and you can read all of their stuff. You can see what they're doing online. You can learn from what they're writing, how they're acting the stuff they're putting out there and they essentially become your virtual mentor. Um, in this day and age, it, it, you know, you really have no excuse for at least finding a few key influential people that you can learn from either directly in your business, business in general, self-development, the works, because there's so much available content out there. Uh, if you're willing to put in the time to research who is someone that you want to follow in similar steps to. Yeah, and I think some people may have a problem, like feel like they're asking for for help when they don't necessarily need it, and that's not necessarily what a mentor is. You know, it's just someone who's, like you said, they've gained a wealth of knowledge. Let them, you know, kind of show you what what the path it takes to go down that same path, uh, where you kind of you're ready for it at least. Oh, and absolutely, and if I mean, even if you just if you identify someone, and maybe you don't have anything now but maybe you have something you can help them with and, and provide them, you know, a little bit of free work or some connections or something to where you provide value to them. It gives you an opportunity to start to build that relationship where when the time comes, you've developed some kind of rapport with that individual that you're able to ask them questions or, or heck you may even see those questions answered play out in real life just by having a relationship with them. Yeah, I wonder, you said uh, maybe it was Tim Ferriss, and I think it may have been. I think I've heard him say something similar about, you know, uh, leading with value with whoever you're trying to reach out to. But it makes me wonder how many emails Tim Ferriss gets of people trying oh. to do the same thing uh, to him using his own strategy. I bet it's uh, it's up there. Oh, I, I can't imagine <laughs> what some of those guys get from an email inbox standpoint just flooded. I, and I think I, I, I'm almost, now that we keep talking, I'm almost positive it's, it was – Tim Ferriss, and it may have been one of his conversations with Chris Saka, um, or Saka, uh, that brought the whole mentorship out uh, when they were talking about startups. That's awesome, and I'll, uh, I'll actually I'll probably look for that podcast and link to it in the in the show notes because um, I think that's that's huge, and I love the Tim Ferriss podcast. He always putting out great stuff. So um, one thing that you know you mentioned, I read on your website, and I found it very um, 
interesting is you said that you are an active participant in life. Um, and that really stuck out to me. Um, one, it kind of hit me because, you know, sometimes people can be passive and, and things like that. But I want to know what that means to you uh, specifically. What does being an active participant in life mean mean to you? Uh, for me, it, it's not being a watcher. You know, it's not being that person that sits on the sidelines and just watches everything go by, whether that's opportunities or relationships or even the change that they just desire. Um, you know, I, I see an active participant as someone who's willing to put themselves out there to take some risk to if they want a change in their career and their life their relationships, they're willing to step out, put the effort into it, commit to making that change, knowing that they could fail, knowing that it's not an overnight process. But it's the Theodore Roosevelt quote about the man in the arena uh, with the blood on his face. And that That's what I see as an active participant in his life because I, I know so many people and I interact with people and I know everyone listening to this podcast has, whether it's themselves or somebody they've interacted with, you see the people that are always talking about wanting something different in their life. Man, I, I really wish I just had a different job or I really wish I was better at this or I did that. And that's that's fully the extent of it. And I understand it takes a lot of time for certain people to get from that talking to that doing, but, but that is the difference. I mean, that's a world of difference for people of once even taking that tiny step forward into doing and being that active participant because that's the only way you're able to initiate change. Otherwise, everything continues to happen to you um, or you wait on things and never have an opportunity to change it um, unless you act out. You know, and I I fully agree with that. I I learned at a very early age that no one, no one's going to look out for you as much as you have to look out for yourself, Uh, you know, and and so if you're not actively trying to change things in your life, then it's just not going to happen. There's no, you're not going to be thrown a a bone that's going to completely change your life. So it leads me to my next question, kind of on the same topic is, if someone has something they're really passionate about, and they want to do it, maybe it's a career change, or or maybe it's yeah, going after a new goal or something. Do you think, are you of of the mindset that they should, you know, maybe make micro adjustments to get there? Or do you think that you should just absolutely cut ties with whatever you're doing and then go full speed ahead on your goal, the other thing that you you want? Honestly, I think it depends on the goal and situation. And I know that's not really the clear cut answer. Like if it's for someone wanting to start their own business, start a new side business, I'm always under the mindset of you need to start it on the side. You know, I, I had compete for a good two and a half years. Uh, yeah, probably two and a half years. Uh, of working side jobs, side consulting contracts, anything and everything to bring in income. So while Compete Build, I was able to put money back into the company or hire a few key people part-time um, and contract out that could help me grow it, knowing I, I was seeing that long picture of I'm willing to do the grunt work, do everything on the side while slowly building this the right way uh, and getting people in place that can help me do that. Uh, much faster than if I were just to keep all the profits and and try to do it myself. Um, If it's any kind of task is going to have a rocky, slower start, um, I think certain things like getting your health and fitness in check, um, I don't think you should jump out and run a marathon tomorrow. Uh, But a big, bold step is committing, you know what, I'm going to the gym three days a week this week before work. Um, And that's not always the easiest decision for people that's kind of jumping into a whole new lifestyle of completely sedentary to being active multiple days a week. Um, but I'm all for that. Um, and I'm trying to give you a good example of of something where I think somebody should just dive back, dive in fully. And, And I think the only ones I can think of in that regard are when they see an addiction or something negatively in their life that is, negatively impacting all areas of their life, whether that's a a very negative relationship uh, with someone, whether that's an addiction to a substance, alcohol, anything for that matter. Those, I think, have to be bold, abrupt, uh, immediate changes uh, in their actions, in their behavior, and in kind of that lifestyle where I think a lot of the other ones you can build upon. And it's a step-by-step process that happens overnight instead of overnight. 
Yeah, so, I mean, if you're trying to eliminate a negative, uh, especially if it's negatively affecting your life, you know, do that immediately. But if it's something that could only be positive, you know, if you have to take your time, take your time. I know I, I read a uh, an article, I think, I think you pronounce his name, Chris Gillibo. Uh-huh. Uh, from, he wrote The $100 Startup amongst other, I think, is it $100? Yeah. Start, yeah, amongst other books. And uh, one of the, I think this is an article on his website called 10 Years to Overnight Success. <laughs> Uh, Sounds about right. Yeah, and so that's what uh, I, I think that he told the story of. He, you know, he was he had been working, writing all this stuff, and then he was on like some big news channel or something like Fox News or something like that, and they were like calling him an overnight success because his book had done really well. And he's like, uh, you know, I've been in the trenches for ten years. I'm glad that you guys have finally found me. Uh, but no, it's it's not an overnight success, you know. So I think uh, that that fits really well with what you're saying about compete. I mean, maybe it, you you weren't doing it on the side for ten years, but you know, over two, and and now you are where you are. So that's really awesome, man. Very motivational. Thanks. Uh, all right, so I got a big question for you because I know I, I saw this on your site, and I was like, man, I have to ask him about this. Uh, and you said your goal is to help. Uh, create, help people create and live their best life every single day. And I know that's a tall order. At Better Humanology, we're trying to make people better. I feel like it's a tall order for us. But, you know, what do you, let's let's just talk about how you see this happening uh, for people out there living their best life every single day. You know, for me and my goal with that is so that every interaction I have with anyone, whether that's the person at FedEx when we're dropping off stuff to the mail guy that picks up our packages to someone on my team or somebody at Starbucks, is to provide some kind of value to that relationship engagement, um, whether it's a simple encouragement, smile, something that can leave them walking away better than when we met. Um, and so th- my thought and and my goals with creating a perfect life and and helping others create a perfect life are to remind them that their life is worth competing for. Um, And I think that's a a simple message, uh, but a powerful one that we forget. And so everything and anything and everything that I do on a day-to-day basis with an overall picture in mind, whether that's through compete whether that's through some of my other work or or engagements and things like that is to remind people of that simple fact. Uh, And then depending on where their journey is, help them if I can or point them in the right direction um, to get there. And and so it's, it's the idea of competing every day to be better than you were the day before. And and for people to kind of understand that and our best life, my best life looks different than yours looks different than another person's. Um, But in my head, what your best life is, is, is someone that's dedicated to being better every day, uh, building a positive legacy uh, that they can leave behind with amazing people um, that want to be on that same journey that are both impacted by that person as well as impacting others. Um, and, and that's really how I see it. That's really how I try to live and, and do everything. You know, the the biggest thing that we've done at Compete over the years with our blogs when we used to highlight stories and people, and we still do, is to show that no matter what you're going through, uh, that life of yours is worth competing for. And too often we get into the mindset and and stuck in this rut that we're the only ones going through a situation. Uh, Nobody else can understand our current trials, our current struggles, our current journey when, man, in all actuality, there are hundreds if not thousands of people in this world that are going through the same thing, are going through worse situations. And in a lot of accounts, there's people that have already gone through that and come out of it the other side, better, stronger, more equipped. And so we want to show those stories of people that are coming out of the other side to remind you, one, you're not alone, and to make you suddenly realize that this impossible situation you see before you is very possible to achieve and to, or to overcome. And once you start to believe something is possible, your behavior shifts incredibly. Um, It's no no longer a, I'm up against an impossible giant. There's no way I'll win. You take a defeatist attitude and you just try to get on versus I sure as heck can beat this. I'm going to take some time. I'm going to do it one way or another. You start to live accordingly. And the coolest part about that is everybody around you, direct and indirect, they see behavior changes. They notice it when I have a behavior change, when you have a behavior change. And so when you have that person that goes from having a defeatist mindset against an impossible goal to 
an active participant in life willing to take on that obstacle knowing they can't overcome it, the other people take note and they want to know why and they want to know what this mindset is and they want to know if they can do it themselves. And so that's a positive chain reaction uh, that we try to create so that everyone is actively pursuing their own best version of themselves and their best version of life every day. Dude, I love it. I, and not going to lie, uh, to put it simply, I like your style. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really agree with a, a lot of what you're saying there. Uh, and something I, I've heard you mention a few times now is, you know, leaving a legacy. Would you say that's one of your, your biggest goals in, in what you're doing with Compete Every Day? Absolutely. Uh, I, I absolutely want to do something that's going to live beyond my years and beyond my name. Um, and so if somebody... 40 years down the road comes into contact with compete every day has a positive interaction and, and is encouraged to make some sort of change in their life. And they never know who I am, what I've done, anything like that. That's a win for me. Um, because I, I understand my life and my story is not about me, um, but is a much bigger story in play. And so I am just wanting to impact as, as many people as I can. And, and right now I feel compete um, has kind of become the channel for that to positively impact people and, and just leave something behind that's that's bigger than me, bigger than my family, uh, bigger than my name, and, and hopefully more impactful than than I could ever be just myself. That's very admirable, man. I really really love that, and I think that if you have that, you know, how could you not wake up every single day knowing that that's your goal and and not just want to get after it? I, that's really awesome. All right, man. Are you ready for the quick fire questions of the show? I'll give you quick uh, little questions and you feel free to answer them however you like. You ready? Let's do it. All right, man. What's the hardest workout you've ever done? Oh, this is a tough one. It's going to be a toss up for me. My two hardest workouts would either be the CrossFit Open from 2015, the last one, 16.5. It was 28, 21, 15, 9 of a calorie row and thruster. Um, it mm. may be the only time I've ever finished a workout and laid on the ground for about 10 minutes. Like you shot me with a taser, <laughs> uh, from just the lactic acid. And then the other one is a workout called, it's a hero workout called Kelsu. Uh, it's a hundred thrusters for time at 135. Uh, but it's every minute it at the top of the minute, you got to do four burpees. Oh yeah. That um, one's awful. It, that one's pretty rough. So th easily those two, I think are a tie for the hardest things I've ever done. You know, funny story about Cal Su is I was only, I'd say a few months into having done uh, CrossFit and I was, you know, young guy and I was like, I, I think I typed on, on the internet, you know, hardest CrossFit workout possible because <laughs> that's what I wanted. And uh, someone threw out Cal Su and I was like, okay, it doesn't sound that bad, but whatever, man, that one gets really bad, really fast, <laughs> especially with me having no CrossFit experience. I'm trying to do these thrusters. I think... I almost died on that one, probably close to Rabdo, and I didn't even know it. But yeah, that one that one's rough, man. I mean, it, it sneaks up on you because you get a few minutes into it, and you're dead from thrusters. And then, oh, it's a minute again. Like, there's there's a good chance a lot of people are going to do four burpees and then rest as much time, and then do four burpees right. and then do another set of thrusters. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, oh, this is going to be. I'll just you know it'd be like a twenty minute workout or whatever. No, you you'll sit there with your hands on your knees just waiting to do burpees again, maybe two or three times if you if you aren't real experienced with those type of workouts. But yeah, man, that one's rough. All right, dude. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Uh, daily practice of goals and I'll, I'll be as brief as I can. Uh, I think I mentioned this when we just first connected my, one of my other top five books is a book called relentless by Eric Greetens. It's a Navy seal writing to a fellow t uh, soldier struggling with PTSD, alcoholism, everything. And, and he talks about how you develop a resilient spirit and a, and a resilient life. And it's about daily practices. And so in my opinion just taking from that and, and just seeing in my own life how you build mental toughness every day is remind yourself all over the place, your truck, your bathroom window, your computer desk of why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, and that helps you in those moments of if it's a, if it's a diet, man, I really want a piece of cake. Well, right on the fridge is your goals. So you're going to see it before you open that refrigerator and it's going to remind you all right, I can pass it for now. Like I can, I can pass this one treat for later. Um, same goals. If trying to work toward a healthy marriage or relationship, if you struggle with certain areas, 
of that, putting those reminders everywhere so that, man, today that temptation's hard. I'm going to fight it. Tomorrow, still tempted, but man, it's a little bit easier and day after day. And so it's the same thing of going into a gym and building your, your, your strength uh, in any one exercise. It's just daily efforts, daily reminders for me of why I'm doing what I'm doing, help keep me focused and delay that gratification uh, for something that's worth more value later. Okay. And so you, you, you mentioned this uh, before that, you know, you kind of put maybe like three by five cards everywhere. Uh, is that, do you, are you putting like your big why on those cards and, or like your smaller goals, like yearly goals or like, how, how does that look for you? Uh, man, if you could see my office, I have white erase boards everywhere. Like, <laughs> yeah. I wanted a giant wall white erase board, and my wife said no in our new house. But, I, got, I got the uh, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have – so the truck of my dash, uh, the current one right now just says, today I will compete for – uh, and it talks about, you know, my family to, to serve and love as a better husband, uh, my team to serve and help them reach their potential, uh, our community with compete uh, to positively encourage and inspire uh, life change. And so I see those every day. So I know going into any interaction with those people, that, those are my goals. Whereas if you walk into my office up here, I have more small goals, but on one of my white erase boards, it's the big goal. It's here's where in, you know, compete every day, the ultimate goal of where we want to be as a company, what we want to be doing, and then all the other points around it, below it and around the office are the small ones. And so in my office is the current one spot. I have the big one, but if you walk all over uh, the rest of my house, I have sticky notes that are a little bit smaller pieces, but are all related to the big one. That's awesome, man. I And I really asked that question more out of personal curiosity because I'm big on uh, doing that type of stuff. And so I was just wondering what your system is and uh, maybe I can uh, take a chapter out of your book. All right, man. If you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Barbell. Wait, do I get weights with the barbell? Because that's a big question. You know, that's. I'm going to say yes. It would be okay. like a package deal. So I'll take the barbell. <laughs> I love squatting uh and i think if i could squat and deadlift press i'd be happy um if i don't get the weights with the barbell i'm probably just going to take a kettlebell uh so i can get a little more bit of everything what weight would you use on the kettlebell oh god i hate two food but i'd probably use the 70 yeah just so you don't run out of things to just do just so <laughs> i don't run out of things to do i don't go to the point where it's like all right we're gonna try to go for a hundred unbroken with the one and a half or one today oh man uh, all right, so the question, the most important question of the show, uh, what is your best advice you have for becoming a better human? This is 100% open-ended. Awesome. Better, Best advice for being a better human uh, would be to understand that every day you're in a competition against the person you were yesterday, to understand that failure will happen. It's inevitable for anyone in any walk of life, uh, but the failure is not fatal just as our successes are not permanent um, and that you should use that failure, that setback to set you up for your biggest win. Um, you have the potential, you have the ability. Uh, there's nothing, you don't need a t-shirt from compete every day. You don't need a pair of shoes from Nike. You don't need a special protein or pre-workout or barbell uh, to accomplish the things in life you want to. Uh, we all have some amazing potential and power inside that I think we always underestimate. And so if you're constantly focused on doing just a little bit more than you did yesterday, serving a little bit more, loving a little bit more, pushing yourself a little bit harder, um, you're going to find that best life. You're going to have success in all facets of your life. Dude, I love that answer. All right, man, what's the best place for people to learn more about what you're doing? Awesome. Uh, I would love if you want to check out our team, uh, competeeveryday.com, uh, all of your social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest is compete every day is our handle. Uh, say hi to me. Uh, my, I'm a ton now on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Twitter, it's Jake underscore T and then the number four and then Instagram is Jake T four. Uh, and so I'm just on there trying to have some fun, talk to people and, and hopefully provide a little bit of encouragement with uh, each post. Awesome, man. And I'll provide all those links in the show notes for anyone who's listening and interested in checking out more about compete every day or Jake himself. All right, Jake, I do want to say thank you very much for being on the better humanology podcast. I really appreciate it, man. 
Dude, this has been awesome. Such a joy. I appreciate it. Losers always whine about their best.